This video only addresses the issue of crime in South Africa and the claims of white genocide. Are white people being systematically murdered by black South Africans? This is a claim I have frequently encountered on white right-wing websites claiming that whites are being killed at genocidal rates in post-apartheid South Africa. What prompted me to make this video was this book, Into the Cannibal's Pot by Lana Mercer, a South African living in the United States. Given that this book is aimed at Americans, and in particular white Americans, I felt it was important to post a video addressing the issue of crime in post-apartheid South Africa. Africa Check, a nonpartisan organization which promotes accuracy in public debate did a report on similar claims made by the South African musician Steve Hofmeyer on his blog and Facebook page. Since most of these people make similar claims and cite similar sources, I will use the Africa Check report as the basis of this video. All credit goes to Africa Check and not to me. Some of the claims being made. Genocide has been carried out against white South Africans and especially white farmers who have been systematically murdered. Black on black violence was the cause of most murders during apartheid. Many of these claimants refer to an article supposedly written by Vusili Tabalala. They refer to him as a journalist and then emphasize that he is a black journalist. No information is provided to where Tabalala worked or what other articles he has written. The other source of some of these claims is a 2003 paper written by Robert McCafferty, who was at the time the communications director for the conservative Cape Town lobby group United Christian Action. Alana cites McCafferty on page 16 of her book. Of her book. What McCafferty did was look at all the crime statistics, then aggregate 44 years of murder numbers to reach an average of 7,036 murders a year under apartheid and a much higher rate in post-apartheid South Africa. There are many issues with this paper. McCafferty even stated factors such as population growth and differentials in time periods would make it unfair to compare this data and not logically sound to do such comparisons. However, he went ahead and did just that, and so these raw numbers appear quite shocking than if done by the accepted method uh, of expressing crime statistics as a ratio per 100,000. In 1951, according to the census results, South Africa had a population of over 12.5 million people. During that year, less than 2,500 murders had been reported. This gives us a murder figure of 19.73 per, per 100,000. In 1970, the population size was about 21.7 million, with the, murder, with the number of murders approaching 7,000. This equates to 32.12 murders per 100,000. By 1994, the murder rate, according to McCafferty, had reached 25,000 a year. The population at that time was just under 40 million. This gives us a figure of 62.5 per 100,000. However, a decade later, the rate had fallen to less than 43 per 100,000. It is now dropped to 30.9 per 100,000 for the 2011-2012 uh, period. This is a lower murder rate than in the 1970s under apartheid. According to Africa Check, all the independent security and research ex experts that we consulted for this report agreed that the, murder, the current murder figures provided by the South African Police Service, SAPS, should be considered accurate. The problem with apartheid era crime statistics. The apartheid crime figures were not an accurate representation of murder in South Africa. The apar under apartheid, the government set up bantusans or homelands, which, were, which was territory set aside for black South Africans. These were supposedly self-governing independent states, which had their own police forces, and these police forces ke kept their own crime statistics. 
Many of these many of the homicides went unreported in these areas. Crime statistics from these areas were not included in South Africa's national crime statistics. To quote South Africa, um, to quote Africa Check, therefore it is probable that while white homicides during apartheid were accurately documented by the state, the number of black homicides was understated in the official reports. The role of apartheid in creating or contributing to violence and murder in black communities is difficult to isolate. It is for this reason that it is difficult if not impossible to make a sound comparison of the murder rate during and after apartheid. The figures could be much higher than what the statistics suggest. Since 1990, race has not been listed as a category in official death records. This deliberate omission may have been intended to avoid the interpretation of raw data by non-experts to support some race-based conspiracy theory. However, an analysis of 1,378 murder dockets that were representative of South Africa in 2004 showed that, quote, in 86.9% of the cases, the victims were Africans. Whites counted for 1.8% of the cases, although whites make up 8.85% of the population. If white genocide was taking place, you'd expect the murder rate for whites to be much higher than the percentage of whites in the general population. These statistics show that in South Africa, you're more likely to be a murder victim if you're a young black man. According to Lizette Lang Lancaster, manager of the Crime and Justice Hub at the Institute for Security Studies, only about 16% of murders occurred during the commission of another crime, mainly aggravated robbery. About 65% of murders started off as assaults due to interpersonal arguments and fueled by alcohol and or drugs resulting in murder. The vast majority of, the vast majority of murders are, she said, social fabric crimes perpetrated by friends or loved ones. What about the claim that white farmers are being systematically killed in South Africa? Historically, in South Africa, most commercial farmers are white, and their risk of being killed is much higher than that of the general population. In fact, it's more dangerous to be a farmer than to be a policeman. The motive for 89.3% of these crimes, according to, three ta according to a 2003 report, is robbery. According to a blog post on Africa Check written by Johan Berger, in both farm attacks and urban home invasions, criminals will not hesitate to use torture to extract information from the victims, from their victims. The big difference, given the remoteness of the farms, is that attackers on farms have much more time and are at less risk of being caught by either police, private security companies, or neighbors. Some of the farm murderers interviewed by the committee did say they had become infuriated by what they described as, ra as the racist and insulting tone of their victims, mostly elderly white farmers and their family members, and this was the reason for the excessive violence used. But the evidence does not support the, the claims that race or racial hatred is the primary motive for farm attacks. In most cases, it is, it is robbery. It is, however, quite possible that the racial interactions during the attack and possibly also historic racial tensions as well as ongoing hate speech aimed at the farming community could play a role in the commission of these crimes. Regardless of these facts and figures, South Africa's crime rate is unacceptably high. It's about four times that of the international average. No one has been able to adequately, adequately explain why this is but there are some reasons that have been mentioned, such as massive disparities in wealth, access to proper facilities. These could be factors in the crime rate. I want to thank you for watching this video and a very big thanks to Africa Check for doing all this research.